Hello, my name is Professor Derek O'Keefe and welcome to the open day at NUI Galway. Uh, I'm delighted to speak to you today about the future of medicine uh, and in particular our exciting new program here at NUI Galway called the Physician Year Program. So who am I? So uh, I originally actually trained as an engineer uh, and then I went on and I trained as a physician. And I work now as a consultant physician at University Hospital Galway and professor of medical device technology at NUI Galway. Um, and the term for somebody who trains as an engineer and as a doctor as well, uh, it's a physician year. And the idea is, is that clinical medicine has lots of problems. Um, everything is a spectrum of color. Nothing is ever black and white. Whereas people who are engineers, they're trained to think in black and white and be solutions orientated. So you have, if you have this cross pollination of skills, uh, you're a physician here. And when you see clinical problems in the hospital, often you can develop some innovative solutions, which I'm going to share with you today. Uh, the medical program at NUI Galway um, does have this stream option of a physician here track, which I'm going to explain to you about. Um, and also at the core of the medical program now, we're introducing digital technology, uh, which is just part of modern medicine. Um, I'll just start off by saying that our, our, our lab and our research work of our team was recently featured on RTE, um, it, the Health Innovation via Engineering Lab, or Hive Lab, um, is my lab. And uh, if you go onto the RTE player and look up a show called Changemakers, uh, you'll see some of the work that we do in our lab in more detail. Here you have a picture of us developing um, a mobility assistance device for one of our patients. And also here you can see one of our robots, Dave, uh, providing um, diabetes education to one of our patients. So if you look up the Hive Lab on the RT player, you can learn more about what we do here at NUI Colway. My own personal research ex um, experience, expertise is taking clinical problems and coming up with engineering solutions. Um, a few years ago, NASA were looking for novel ways of monitoring how astronauts sleep in space. Uh, when you're in space, um, you know, in orbit, you go around uh, the Earth, uh, many times and you have lots of sunrises and sunsets and that really upsets your circadian rhythm. It's like really bad jet lag. Um, so they're looking to monitor how astronauts sleep because if you don't sleep well, you don't perform well. Um, and they did try originally, you know, the, the tools that we have on Earth with your, which is polysomnography. Um, but myself, my colleague actually developed a brand new way of monitoring sleep using a bio vest that you can see here in the picture. Um, and using heart rate variability as a surrogate, we're able to define when people were in different stages of sleep, REM and non-REM. Um, and that project flew above, on board the International Space Station uh, and was used by the crew uh, and was a, a successful mission and a great example of using uh, innovative thinking uh, in a clinical environment. If you take a step back and you think of modern medicine, um, traditionally medicine has been very hospital focused. Healthcare means that you would normally have to go to a bricks and mortar institution to get the experts or the diagnostics to, to help you with your condition. But we know in many areas of society in the last 20 years, especially, it's become decentralized. So shopping now, a lot of it's done online. Um, you still might have to go to a department store once, twice a year, but the majority of it is done digital to digital. Um, and the same with banking. You know, we rarely go into a bank now. Um, most of it's done online. And, and healthcare is heading in that direction. Um, and here at NUI Go, we recognize that and we're integrating that into our program in the uh, undergraduate medical curriculum. Uh, so it, it's really important to change with the times uh, to make sure that the doctors who graduate from our program uh, have all the school, skills and competencies that they need. The reason for this massive change in our society and soon to be in healthcare um, is because of uh, this phenomenon of the increasing computing power of the microchips that are around us. Um, it's an exponential curve increasing over time. And you can see here in the middle of the last century, this is the inflection point. Um, and this is when they developed the world's first programmable computer. Alan Turing did that in the middle of World War II to crack the Enigma cipher. There's a really good movie about it called The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch about it. And then into the 60s and 70s, the development of the transistor and ultimately the integrated circuit um, that allowed modern electronics to, um, to do massive amounts of computing power. Um, and because of Moore's law then, which means that uh, in the same one inch of silicon, they can get more and more transistors uh, every year. What that means practically is that the technology around us has got smaller 
shrunken and then also got more powerful uh, over the last couple of years. And the mobile phone is a great example of that. You know, they were like brick-like devices in the 80s and now they can fit uh, you know, in the palm of your hand. And since the first smartphone was uh, released in 2007, uh, these are all the discrete devices that it's replaced. So a remarkable transformation um, in our technology as a species in the last 15 years. And because of that now, we're ushered into the era, era of digital health. Now there's so many things that can be integrated through the internet of things or the IOT, blood pressure sensors, heart sensors, diagno and other diagnostics, um, as well as two-way video consultations and remote monitoring as I outlined earlier with, for example, the astronauts. COVID-19, while it's brought a lot of challenges around the world, it also was a great accelerant of what we call digital transformation. So we say that, you know, 10 years of digital transformation happened in one year because of COVID-19, uh, because people got more comfortable with things like remote consultations because they just had to. So here at NUI Galway, um, we launched the Physician Ear Programme. Uh, it's a combined medical engineering degree it's part of the undergraduate medical stream, so you have to get into medicine to be able to um, apply for this program. And it's led by Dr. Ted Vaughan and myself. Uh, Dr. Vaughan works in biomedical engineering uh, and myself in the School of Medicine. Uh, the mission of the Physician Year program is better health through clinical innovation. And people who graduate from the uh, eight year degree uh, graduate with an MB, BCH, BAO, BE which is a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Bachelor of Obstetrics, and a Bachelor of Engineering. And uh, now, even though we are focused on technology and, and you know, using the tools of digital medicine, it's really important to remember the human side of medicine. Um, and we did a documentary for RTE called Bittersweet, which outlines many of the difficult journeys that our patients have with chronic diseases and how technology can actually help and empower them on that journey. So again, I'd encourage you to, to look at the RTE player for that. Uh, this is an example of one of those devices that I talked about earlier, the Jedi glove for our, one of our patients. This is a new way of seeing for people with vision impairment or blindness. It's a way of seeing through vibration feedback in your fingers. The sound you're hearing is an impression of the vibration that she feels as she uses the Jedi glove. So this glove gives you haptic feedback and allows you to feel the force of what's around you spatially. Um, and that idea of feeling the force is a new way of seeing as it were for people with visual impairment because they can move their hand around quite easily and build up a spatial picture of what's in their environment. Yeah, I think it's it's really cool. You don't have to carry a cane around with you the whole time, you can just slip on a glove and it's, it, it's basically telling you that something is there in front of you and, and you just have to figure out what it is. I don't really particularly like the cane and I'm on a waiting list to get a guide dog. So there's really only two options or else just to link the people that you're with, your family and friends. It was a contribution in, in a way of helping uh, people in their daily routines. So yeah, it was a big challenge and it was an exciting project to do. Traditionally with research, we talk about bench to bedside. When something happens in the lab and it goes to the bedside to try it out. But what we're trying to do here at NUI Galway is do bedside to bench to bedside. So it starts first with the patient, with the problems that are important to them. And then we take the technology that we have to find solutions for those problems, which are often quite innovative because they haven't been thought that way before. And then we know what's technologically feasible. Uh, and then we push the envelope to make meaningful things that will help our patients. So that's the Jedi glove. And since um, we made that video, we've actually managed to shrink down the Jedi Glove into a watch size device, which is far more ergonomic and useful for our patient. And you can see that uh, latest version of the device in that RTE Change Makers program on uh, the RTE player. This. Um, so some other work that I've done besides the International Space Station is continuing my work with NASA and working in the NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations or NEMO. So before we go back to the moon and on to Mars, NASA have a couple of uh, what we could say um, is space analog stations around the world. These are environments which mimic the harshness of living in an extreme environment like space. So NASA have environments on the lava fields of uh, Hawaii, the deserts of the Mojave in America. Uh, they have them in the Northern Arctic 
Um, and again, they, they have one here uh, off the coast of Florida called the, the Aquarius Habitat. And what happens is, is astronauts or aquanauts, as we call them in this mission, um, they live underwater 30 feet down for a month. And they're not allowed to leave the habitat if you know anything goes wrong or something like that. It's to mimic being remote and far away from all the usual things you might need if something goes wrong, like popping out to the store to get some supplies. Or uh, the idea is it's an extreme environment. You're separated from your base station, which on this side site is topside uh, on the uh, the shore, and we just communicate with the astronauts through video communications as we would if they were in space. And this gave us a great opportunity to try out some modern remote monitoring technologies. This is the kind of equipment that I used with the uh, aquanauts or astronauts, um, looking at all their physiological parameters, which, you know, five, 10 years ago was only possible really in an ICU setting to get this kind of granularity on physiological data. But now, thankfully, with uh, what we outlined earlier, Moore's law and the shrinking of technology and the increase of the computation power, this kind of wearable tech is coming into um, to medicine. This is an example of me talking with the crew and explaining to them some of the physiological findings. And then from that data, not only has a doctor been able to say, you know, who's sick or not sick, but also using that physiological information to help make mission decisions, such as who should go outside the vehicle today to do a spacewalk, or in this case, uh, a walk at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and so we're using physiological data now for those kind of decisions and not just for, for, um, for treating people who are sick. This is the kind of activities they did on the ocean floor, like they would do if they were doing a spacewalk um, outside the space station or indeed uh, a lunar exploratory mission. So it was a really exciting project and it's again an example of engineering and medicine coming together uh, in novel ways. The other thing we've done uh, successfully at NUI Galway, we actually did it pre-COVID and then during COVID, uh, um, there was an exponential growth in it, is the idea of remote monitoring. A lot of the west of Ireland, as you might know, um, has quite a low um, population density, uh, and therefore it lends itself very well to remote care solutions. So we've been able to interact with our patients, not only on video conferencing, uh, but also seeing all their physiological data as well. For example, in diabetes, being able to access their blood glucose through the cloud. Uh, we also did a, a mission uh, to the Aran Islands. I'll share the video of that with you. It was the world's first drone mission delivery of medicine, uh, BVLAS, so beyond visual line of sight. So over the horizon, fully programmable AI drone mission. I came to the island 31 years ago. I'm insulin dependent. We make medicine for people with diabetes access to this medicine it's more than important because without it i would be dead it's gonna be a great mission we had a really productive meeting there with all the project team for the diabetes drone the sky tango allowing us to coordinate the actual mission between all the stakeholders nova nordisk whose medicine will be part of the payload today a wing copter we're giving us the actual drone that's going to fly to the island vodafone who are going to be providing the drone data link connectivity and survey drones ireland we're actually going to execute the flight for us for this innovative beyond visual line site flight the mission is just taking off the diabetes drone project was centered around delivering medication to the iron islands it's, it's absolutely unreal visual contact really amazing to do this the first in the world delivery by b Bloss of diabetes medicine everything is here fantastic So back to the physician year degree, it's a combined degree. And if you've looked at the syllabus of the medical degree at uh, NUI Galway, you'll see as well as the traditional medical program, um, either the five-year program or the six-year program with pre-med, there's other options available to you depending on your interests. Um, so for example, with the intercalated undergraduate medical degree, or you can do an extra year during the track um, and get awarded an, an additional BSc, for example, in pharmacology. Um, you have the medical scientist training program whereby you do your medical degree, but you also do a PhD as part of that stream. And then this new program, the physician year program, where you do your medical degree and a three year engineering degree. Now, there is other programs in the world that are trying to combine the two programs of engineering and medicine because other people see the benefit of it. Uh, one of the most famous examples uh, would be the Harvard MIT program, the health sciences technology whereby, as you might know in America, 
you cannot do medicine unless you're a graduate. So you must have graduated from something else. So this program combines the engineering of MIT and then the medical degree in Harvard. Northwestern University in Chicago, they have a combined seven year program, again, dual engineering medical track. Um, and then the National University of Singapore, Malaysia, they have a combined eight year medical um, engineering program with Duke University. So there is other uh, points in the world that have tried to do this very successfully. And we're the first program in Europe to undertake this um, bold initiative. And one of the questions is why now and, and why Galway? So I guess one of the great things about Galway is that we have a fantastic um, ecosystem around the actual campus. So we have the NUI Galway campus, we have the University Hospital co-located uh, right across the road, and then we have this really fantastic medtech infrastructure around the west of Ireland. So we have the opportunity, the infrastructure and the ecosystem to create these physician engineers or physicianeers. And as I mentioned, between America um, to our west and then Singapore to our east, uh, us having this program uh, in Galway uh, represents um, a longitude of excellence for medtech in Europe. So 13 of the top 15 med tech companies are in Ireland um, and focused mainly around uh, west, the west of Ireland and Galway in particular. Um, and it's a big part of the Irish economy, these uh, med tech companies producing ventilators, contact lenses and stents. Uh, we have a very strong medical program at NUI Galway. It's a five-year program, it's the traditional program. Um, and the engineering program here, biomedical engineering was the first biomedical engineering program in Ireland here at NUI Galway uh, and again a very strong track record of excellence. So the ecosystem around here this is an example of some of the, the companies that you might recognize Medtronic, Boston Scientific um, these are the biggest uh, medical device companies in the world uh, as well as uh, great success stories of Irish innovation in companies like Aerogen um, and then lots of startups in a very healthy um, spin out uh, culture here in the west of Ireland. Uh, we also have the National uh, Med Tech Research Centre, Science Foundation Ireland in Coorum, um, and we have the BioInnovate program, which is a very innovative way of developing new types of technology for clinical care. So it's a really great place to do a medical degree with an engineering flavour um, or indeed a dual engineering medical track. So it's a stream option in year three of the program. Um, as mentioned, it's a combination of the five-year medical degree and the four-year engineering program. And because of some overlap with the syllabus and some additional classes and projects that the students will do, we're able to combine it to an eight-year program. And um, so for the first three years, the students are based in the School of Medicine. The years four to six, they're predominantly based at the College of Engineering. And then back in year seven and eight to the School of Medicine to round out their clinical training. Uh, and of course, for a program like this, which wants engineers and medics, we, we want the best of the best. So we want students um, that are very strong in math and science. Uh, again, traditionally, when you do medicine, you actually don't really use your math skills anymore from leaving certs, your applied maths. Um, uh, it tends to be more biology focused when you get into medicine, obviously. But um, we want a, a pathway for people who still enjoy math and enjoy thinking of innovative solutions are creative. So we're going to have um, an interview process in the second year of the medical degree. So you must gain entry to the medical program. Uh, and then through that interview process with the engineering faculty and the medical faculty, we're going to uh, choose less than five students probably out of a medical class of 200 students for consideration of this dual track physician year program. Because we want to ensure that students who undertake this arduous dual program have the academic competency to complete it to a very high standard. Um, and then the other students in the class who may not want to do a dedicated engineering track, uh, we're making sure through a syllabus review at the moment um, that these students' modules um, are very focused on digital technology. This is a really exciting project that we did last year here at NUI Galway, bringing research from our labs into the actual clinics for the benefit of patients. This is a Droid Audiovisual Educator, or DAVE for short. It's the most advanced civilian robot available, 
fully programmable with facial recognition, artificial intelligence, and a series of lasers and radars to judge the environment it operates in. In 100% capability, we're probably only using 5 to 10% of it at the moment. But some of the projects we have coming up will fully uh, test the system out and allow us to have these interactions in complex environments, specifically around the nuanced area of healthcare education, which is a, a new field of research. Dave is easing into things at University Hospital Galway. Its first task is to remind people about hand washing. Hello, would you like to clean your hands using this sanitizer or sink? Technology like this looks like becoming more commonplace in a range of settings. What we want to do within this project is to combine medicine, psychology, computer engineering and the learning sciences and evaluate can they teach us. Key to all of this is the extent to which humans are willing to deal with machines. The important thing going forward is that we take into consideration people's concerns. Is it personalised to them? Is it more human-like rather than just robotic? And finally, do they trust it? Have they been referred by a trusted source, for example, their doctor? Depending on how the trials go, Dave could soon be used to carry out basic time-intensive tasks like briefing patients on condition management, freeing doctors and nursing staff to do other clinical work. Pat McGrath, RTE News, Galway. Okay, so um, that was Dave. And again, you can see more about Dave if you go look at the Changemakers program on the RTE player. Um, he's been successfully used both to remind people about hand washing and then also to educate patients about chronic conditions such as diabetes. Um, and again, if you like this uh, idea and you're interested to learn more about the idea of digital health and the future of medicine, which is digital doctors, um, I've done a TED talk on this that you can see on YouTube called Digital Doctors. And that will tell you more about this thematic area um, that's undergoing a Cambrian explosion in the last few years and, and will no doubt be the future of medicine. If you'd like to learn more about the Physician Near degree, um, we have a website, uh, NUI Galway forward slash Physician Near. Um, and if you want to learn more about med tech and so on, um, I have a handle on Twitter, Physician Near, or by a regularly tweet about things such as med tech and the innovations that are coming to modern medicine. So thank you for your time. Um, I hope you enjoy your day here at NUI Galway at the open day, and hopefully we'll see you as a future medical student at NUI Galway, learning about digital technology and healthcare, uh, and indeed maybe even a future physician here in the dual track program. So thank you very much and have a great day.